In this video, I'll show you how to solve a cubic inequality. The question reads, solve the nonlinear inequality x to the power of 3 minus x to the power of 2 greater or equal to 2x. The first thing that I'll do is rearrange this inequality so that all the terms are on one side. So I'll bring this 2x to the left side, and that gives me x to the power of 3 minus x to the power of 2 minus 2x is greater or equal to 0. So we have to find out when the left side is positive, greater or equal to zero. To do this, we need to find the critical points. But notice that all three terms share a common factor, x. So I can factor out an x before I start doing that. x times x to the power of two minus x minus two. Notice now that this is a quadratic trinomial. And a quadratic trinomial can easily be factored. The way we factor a quadratic trinomial is through trial and error. What two numbers multiply to negative 2 and add to negative 1? The two numbers that I'm thinking of are negative 2 and 1. Negative 2 times positive 1 gives me negative 2 right here. And negative 2 plus 1 gives me negative 1, which is the b term right there. With these two numbers, I can now factor this quadratic so that it looks like this. Opening up two parentheses, x minus 2 and x plus 1 must be greater or equal to zero. The reason why factoring the cubic is important is because it allows us to find the critical points. To find the critical points, I need to solve for x on the left side, and that's easy. x is equal to zero, positive two, and negative one. Just pretend that we set this equal to zero, this equal to zero and solved for x, set this equal to zero and solved for this x, it would give us negative one. So now that we have the critical points, we need to find out what happens before negative one, in between negative one and zero, between zero and two, and after two. So we set up a chart. When x is less than negative one, when x is between negative one and zero, when x is between zero and positive two, and when x is greater than two. Let's go ahead and pick some random test value that is less than negative one. Let's pick negative two. For this we can pick negative 0 0.5. For this we can pick one. And for this we can pick three. If I input negative two into here, I don't need to use my calculator. I can just use my intuition. So putting a negative two into here gives me a negative number. Putting a negative two into here gives me another negative number. So negative times negative, and negative two into here gives me another negative number. Negative times negative is positive, times negative is negative. We'll do the same thing for this test value. Placing it into here gives us a negative value. Placing it into here gives us another negative value. And placing it into here, negative 0 0.5 plus one gives us a positive value. Negative times negative is positive, times positive, we have a plus. Let's put in one. One is a positive number. One minus two gives us a negative number. One plus one gives us a positive number. Positive times negative, that's negative. Negative times positive, still negative. And finally, putting a plus three into here, this will be plus, this will be plus, and this will also be plus that gives us a positive overall output. Therefore, our function will be positive between negative one and zero and positive when x is greater than two. To document that, we can write it out like this, where x is between negative one and zero and x is greater than two. And keep in mind that since originally we had greater or equal to we should also use the same greater or equal to for all of these statements. And there you have it. That is how to solve a cubic inequality.